Hi, this is Synth Chaser with SynthChaser.com and today we're going to be repairing this Oberheim OBXA synthesizer. This is an 8 voice keyboard and the main reason that it's been brought to me for repair is the auto-tune isn't working and, and even when auto-tune passes the voices they sound out of calibration. And uh, So when you turn the keyboard on uh, you'll hit the auto button and it will cycle through the different voices that are installed in the, in the, in the keyboard. Each voice has its own voice card. And then any voices that fail will be indicated by a flashing light. And those voices will be removed from the rotation. So here, uh, voices 3 and 8 failed, so we have 6 voices active. But it sounds like they're, they're still out of tune. Also, this one is, is really inconsistent. If I hit auto-tune again, completely different voices may indicate that they've failed. So here, this time, only voice 3 failed. But it definitely doesn't sound like it's in tune. Also, as I'm sure you noticed, the keyboard is very noisy. Some of the keys here are sticking up. Uh, so basically, we need to, to redo the bushings on this keyboard. Uh, Additionally, uh, one of the buttons here, this oscillator 2 mod button, is not working. Uh, you can hear it, it makes a nice click when you engage it. This one is, is not working. Uh, also, the, this, uh, this particular keyboard is, has MIDI. It's got an older Kenton MIDI kit installed. And uh, the customer reports that the MIDI out is working. The MIDI in is not, and I mean that's that's kind of what you would want a MIDI kit on a vintage synthesizer for is to be able to use MIDI in and control it, uh, you know, via computer or another keyboard. Um, so to open up, uh, we're going to open up and have a quick peek inside this keyboard and discuss what we're going to do. To open up the OB series keyboards, uh, there's two screws on each side. One he one here and one here and on the other side that you remove. In this case I've already removed them and then the top holds up and you have access to the inside. So over here is the power supply and these are the original capacitors so we're going to do a power supply rebuild for this, for this uh, keyboard uh, which entails replacing the capacitors and bridge rectifiers and um, adjusting the voltages these are the microprocessor board here. Uh, this particular one has the, uh, the uh, Oberheim expansion board. This expanded it from a 56 program keyboard to a 120 program keyboard. And then, uh, as I mentioned, it has an older Kenton MIDI kit here, which we're going to need to take a look at. Uh, and then over here, are the, the voice motherboards with the voice boards installed. So there's one on the top and there's one on the bottom. Uh, each of these trays can hold four voice boards. Uh, this particular one has all eight filled. Um, he said that when he got it, it had uh, six, and he added two. So they're they're not perfectly matched to begin with, and I could see that the capacitors um, they're different brands. So you know, and you can see like this one versus this one. This one is blue. This one is black. Uh, so, you know, the, the capacitors have aged, you know, they're different manufacturers, they, they, they're old, some are older than others, they've aged differently perhaps. So we're going to get all the voices um, uh, consistent and, and tuned. Um, then also up here, these are the pot boards, and uh, this particular block of dip switches allows you to, to kill, uh, to, to remove certain voices from rotation. These switches get oxidized and cause problems with the voices, so we're going to replace that as well. Uh, and then we're going to take a look at some of the other issues like the button and the MIDI. Uh, so first thing we'll do, uh, first thing that you should do when, when repairing any, any synthesizer would be to recap or rebuild the power supply. And that's where we'll start with this one. So the first thing that we're going to do in repairing this uh, Oberheim OBXA is to rebuild the power supply. The power supply is this board on the left side of the synthesizer. Um, 
Fortunately, on the OBXA, it's a separate board. On later model like the OB8, the power supply is actually built into the microprocessor board, this large board here, and it's uh, more challenging to get out. So in this regard, the OBXA is more serviceable than the, uh, than the OB8. Um, you can see there's the original uh, filter capacitors there. Um, so in order to service this, we're going to have to pull it out. Um, so there's a whole bunch of connectors coming off of this, and I'll, I'll show you what they are. So here's the transformer, and the uh, AC voltage comes in on this connector here. So you'll disconnect this connector. Uh, there are four colored connectors up here, each with three, uh, four positions but three wires coming out of them. And they go back here to these uh, uh, larger uh, transistors uh, that are mounted on heat sinks on the back of the, uh, on the, on the, back of the synthesizer. And uh, these are the uh, voltage regulators and pass transistors for the different voltage rails. So they're off board so they can get better cooling. Um, that uh, so you'll disconnect these but make note of the order that you take them off and the, the uh, position of the, the color of the wires so you put them back in correctly and then finally there's four connectors here which have the uh, which basically carry the the, um, the regulated voltages to the various parts of the synthesizer so again make note of, of uh, the order um, a position that they came off in, disconnect them, and then there should be four screws. There's one here. Uh, someone's worked on this and not put a screw back uh, in, the, in each corner. You'll remove those screws and then you can take the power supply out. So I'm going to do that now and then we'll discuss what we're going to do to the power supply. So this is the power supply that's been removed from the synthesizer. This actually has an additional connector that I didn't go over in the removal process. This is for the Kenton MIDI kit. Uh, there was also another wire soldered here at the negative uh, uh, terminal of this uh, capacitor, uh, possibly also for the, for the Kenton kit. So uh, someone has worked on this power supply before, I can tell. Uh, this is what the original bridge rectifier looks like. It's a one amp bridge rectifier. And then uh, someone's replaced this, which is the, the bridge for the five volt rail uh, with, a, with a beefier bridge rectifier. And that's a very good idea. These bridges run very, very hot um, and they're a common failure point in the OB series synthesizers. Uh, I've seen them short out, which causes the fuse to blow. Um, and then also I've measured some of them with thermal camera. Um, in particular, the, the 5 volt rail, I've seen the bridge running like about 140, 150 degrees Celsius. Uh, the part is rated for about 120 degrees Celsius. So by improving the, uh, by upgrading the bridge rectifier, you're going to take a, a, a lot of the heat off of it and uh, it'll last longer. So I sell a kit, uh, a recap kit for the OBXA that includes all the capacitors, but also includes the bridge rectifiers. So we're gonna replace these, these two bridges, which don't run as hot as this one. Uh, we're gonna change it from a one amp bridge to a two amp bridge rectifier. And then the, this one, even though someone's replaced it before, we're still gonna replace it uh, with the one from my kit, uh, which is a six amp bridge rectifier. And that should take a lot of the heat off of it, uh, make it last longer. We're going to change out all the capacitors on this board, all the, the electrolytic capacitors. Uh, sometimes there's a tantalum one here, but um, so we're going to replace these main filter capacitors and then these smaller capacitors. They're all original. Uh, we are also going to clean any oxidation off of these uh, header pins. Um, some, some people, you know, uh, will replace them with, with gold plated connectors. Um, you can also replace the voltage regulators and all the trimmers everywhere in the synthesizer. But to keep this repair, you know, economical, but to address the things that are going to make the synthesizer stable for a long time, we're going to change the capacitors, we're going to replace the bridge rectifiers, we're going to clean the, the connectors, and we're going to adjust the voltages um, to, to 15 uh, and, th and 5 volts. Uh, so I will depopulate this board and, um, and show you what it looks like empty and then we'll put the, uh, the parts back in and move on to the next task. 
So I've removed all the, the capacitors and the bridge rectifiers from the power supply and I've uh, cleaned up the board with some denatured alcohol to remove flux residues um, and uh, dirt and uh, oxidation and stuff like that. So it's, it's ready for the new capacitors and bridge rectifiers. There's the old ones. The new bridge rectifier for the 5 volt uh, rail is substantially beefier than the one that was there and it will fit in the holes that are drilled in the board uh, but you need to make sure that, that all the solder is cleared out from the holes so it, it will fit. Uh, the other ones we're going to use the same package but twice the current capacity so we're going to go from 1 amp to 2 amps in the same package so there will be an easy fit in there. So now we're going to put in the, uh, the new bridge rectifiers and capacitors and I'll show you the finished product. So this is the power supply after the new capacitors and bridge rectifiers have been installed. So this power supply is now way more robust than it was before. Uh, besides the fact that these original electrolytic capacitors from 35 years ago have long dried out, the new ones, uh, they have better characteristics than the old ones. Uh, better brand, better manufacturing, uh, and then I also use higher voltage capacitors where I, where I can fit them and where they're available uh, so they operate, uh, they'll last longer that way. Uh, the bridge rectifiers, we changed the, uh, the one amp bridge rectifiers that were mounted flush against the board so they dissipate their heat onto the board, which uh, in this case uh, you can see this one isn't so bad, but you can see that the PCB has been uh, kind of charred a little bit. Not charred, but uh, browned a little bit from heat. So the new ones, uh, there are two amps here on the plus and minus 15 volt rails. They're raised, they're mounted raised up a little bit so the heat can dissipate and doesn't burn the board. Then the uh, one amp uh, 5 volt uh, bridge rectifier has been upgraded to a 6 amp. Uh, bridge rectifier so this will dissipate heat a lot better it'll handle the load coming through here and the net result with these changes is the synthesizer will perform better than it was prior to the power supply upgrade and it'll be rock solid for years to come so normally at this point oh uh, one other thing is I reinstalled this wire to the uh, to the Kenton MIDI there was also another wire coming off here uh, and because of that, uh, it's not going to be so straightforward to pop the, and I, I need to take that bender, bender board circuit out later to repair the switch. So I don't want to hard solder a wire back to the power supply um, at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reinstall the power supply uh, and I'll leave the, the voltage calibration until the rest of the calibrations after we finish the other repairs. So now I'm going to turn my attention to the dip switches uh, which disable the voices. The dip switch needs to be replaced with a new one um, and I'll show you how to do that shortly. Now that we've got the power supply back in we're going to replace this 8 position dip switch which allows you to disable voices. Uh, the switches get oxidized and cause problems with the voices. So to do this we're going to need to remove this board which is the pot board number 2 and while we have that out, over here there's some capacitors. Uh, usually they're, they're tantalum. It looks like someone replaced them at some point here. But internally to these boards there's a 5.6 volt uh, rail. And uh, these electric, ele electrolytic capacitors are the, the smoothing capacitors for that rail. So since we're taking the board out to do this, it's very little incremental effort to replace those capacitors to make sure that that, that rail runs smoothly. So to get this board out, we disconnect the connector here. And then there's uh, some screws one, two, three, four, five, six that hold this board to the, uh, to the panel. Uh, so we're going to use a quarter inch uh, nut driver to release these. Uh, but... So we're going to unscrew this from the panel and 
set these nuts aside. So once I get these nuts off, I'll show you the next step. So I've removed the six nuts and the only thing that's holding this board right now to the panel are the, uh, the, the, cap, the knob caps for the potentiometers. And I've taken all of them off except one. So when I take that last one, the board is released and, uh, and it comes off like this. Uh, in this case, I guess there's also some wires here for the for the Kenton MIDI kit that are hard soldered onto the board. So I'm going to have to set something down below to uh, to work on this. Normally, I would move the the synthesizer out of the way and uh, just work with the board on the bench. But in this case, uh, since they're kind of going all over the place down below, let me uh, zoom out a little bit and maybe you can see it. I'm going to grab the camera and then you can see it. Yeah, you can see it. Uh, yeah, so since these wires are going to, they're going to the, 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 the jack panel, they're going to the Kenton MIDI board. So I'm going to work on this board kind of right down here. Uh, but uh, one thing to be careful about is if you uh, close the synthesizer, you want to take these standoffs off. Uh, Otherwise, they'll fall fall off, and you'll lose them. So, don't want to lose the standoff. So the screws are are uh, welded onto the case. So it's the the nuts and the standoffs that come off. So I'm going to uh, set myself up to get the dip switch off, and then these two capacitors, and then we'll replace those. So I've changed the dip switches and the two capacitors on pot board number two and I put it back. So I put the standoffs back in, I put the board on and then I, uh, I, I screwed in the, the nuts, uh, reconnected the four connectors there and I also put the, the knobs back on. While I had the board out, I also vacuumed out. Uh, there was a lot of dust that came in around the, the switches and the potentiometers, so I vacuum that out. Um, and then everything is tucked away. Uh, also, when, you, when you're done with this, make sure that all the, uh, the switches are on. That will save a lot of uh, troubleshooting later if you forget that, that maybe, you, uh, maybe you knocked one of those to off when you were uh, installing the switch. So now we can turn our attention to the uh, voice cards. So I'm going to pull all eight voice cards out now, starting with the ones here on the upper uh, upper voice board tray. Uh, this is voices five through eight. And the way that you remove the, uh, the voice cards is uh, unscrew them. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six screws on each, and then they lift up, uh, and these connectors will, will come off. So I'm going to pull the voice cards out and then I'll show you how to get to the lower tray to get the eight voice cards that are down below. So I've removed three of the voice cards and I've unscrewed this last one to remove it. Simply pull it up and uh, these connectors come out. Uh, to get to the lower voice cards, uh, I've removed three screws, one here, one here, and one here. Then I can disconnect this connector and then this tray will fold up like this providing access to the voice cards down below. And the process is the same, remove the six screws, lift the voice card out. So I'm going to get the remaining vo four voice cards out and then uh, we'll uh, recap them and change the, the trimmer on them. So now that we've got the voice cards removed, we can recap them and change the trimmer pots. Um, we'll take a look at one of these voice cards here. So there's some capacitors sprinkled throughout the boards, and we're going to change all of these. They're all electrolytic capacitors that we're changing. Um, two of them are, are just used as decoupling capacitors uh, on the power supply rails, and the others are used in the signal path. The, so the capacitors that I put in the kit for the signal path are, are high-grade audio grade uh, capacitors, and the other ones are more appropriate for power supply um, or general use. Uh, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to change these two trimmer pots. 
So there's 15 trimmers uh, on, on each voice board. They control like the pulse width, uh, tuning, volts per octave, uh, things like that for each of the oscillators, the filter. Uh, so th these are the trimmers for oscillator 1, these are the trimmers for oscillator 2. And they use the absolute cheapest potentiometer for the initial frequency for oscillator 1 and oscillator 2. It's a single turn pot and it makes it very, very difficult to, to, to calibrate and tune these oscillators to each other and, and tune them correctly. So these two are the most critical ones that we need to replace and we're going to replace them with this style of, of trimmer. It's a multi-turn 20 or 25 turn uh, potentiometer of the same value uh, that's going to allow us to get this instrument in better tune um, and get the, get the oscillators tuned to each other better as well. Uh, so we're going to remove those parts, uh, the capacitors and those two trimmers from each of these voice boards and put the new part in and then I'll check back with you. And here's the completed voice cards uh, and the pile of capacitors and trimmers that we took off of them. So we replaced all the capacitors, the electrolytic capacitors. Uh, these are the two uh, non-audio grade and the others you can see they're the gold audio grade capacitors. And then also we replaced these uh, these single turn trimmers with uh, multi turn trimmers for the initial frequency for oscillator 1 and oscillator 2. Um, unfortunately that's not all the work that we need to do to get this in tune and sounding good. This is just the first step, the, the, the leg work. Um, now we need to put the voice boards back into the keyboard and we need to calibrate them. We need to adjust all 15 of these trimmers that are on there uh, to get everything, the filter, the oscillators, everything in tune and, and calibrated correctly. Um, so this keyboard, uh, the, the keyboard, we need to do the bushings and the bus bar is dirty. So when, when I'm playing notes, they're often re-triggering. So that's going to make it difficult to, uh, to calibrate the, the voices if the, the bus bar and the key contacts are dirty. So in the next part of the video, we're going to uh, refurbish the keyboard. We're going to change the bushings, uh, we're going to level the keys, and we're going to clean the bus bar and the key contacts. And then once we're done with that, we'll come back and, and calibrate the voices and uh, the power supply and, and everything else in the synthesizer. And that'll be uh, another video. So stay tuned for the next part where we, uh, where we refurbish the keyboard. Thanks for watching.